Hi Clubbers and welcome to TNT. Hey, it's Mr. Gary here and I am so thankful that you're joining us this week. We are in section 1.2, section 1.2, and we are going to have another exciting adventure in God's Word today. But before we can get to that, we need to do, that's right, our opening. So I need everybody on your feet because we are going to that's right. We are going to the pledge to the American flag. So I need you on your feet. Right hands over our hearts. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, keep, keep standing. Very good. No, everybody on your feet, right hands over our hearts still, and the pledge to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Very good. Well, it's time for the books of the Bible song, but before we get to the books of the Bible song, I just want to go over some very important things real quick about God's Word, the Bible. There are how many books in the Bible total? 66. Very good. How many in the Old Testament? That's right, 39. And how many in the New Testament? 27. Very good. That equals 66. Good job. All right. And if we remember, there was a period between the Old Testament and the New Testament where there was silence. Nothing was written. Does anybody remember how many years that was? That's right, 400 years. 400 years. All right, so you guys are doing good at this. So keep, keep these things in mind because next week we're going to add another important fact about God's Word, the Bible. But right now, we are going to sing the books of the Bible song so we know all the names, and where to find it in the Bible, and what order it's in. So I need everybody on your feet, and I want to hear everybody singing. Come on, everybody on your feet. You can do it. All right, let's do it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Good job, everybody. All 66 books of the Bible. You did a great job. You can do it. If you're struggling a little bit, keep working at it. You'll get it. I know you can do it. Well, we need to do something very important. 
before we get started with our lesson, and we need to pray, okay? So let's get in an attitude of prayer. So let's get our hands folded, our eyes closed, our heads bowed, and let's pray. Dear God, I thank you that we can come together this week to learn more about you. Help us to learn your Bible and to learn it well so that we would know the truth, that, and that truth being your truth, the truth of the one true God who sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins so that we might be forgiven, so that we could be with him one day in heaven. Father, I just pray that you will open our ears, hearts, and minds to your truth and help us to learn from your word this week. We thank you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, before Miss Angie comes to give the lesson, I need to ask you a very important question. Do you have your handbook and your Bible with you? You need both of those things. They are very important to you, and you need them with you. So, if you don't have them right there beside of you ready for Miss Angie in the lesson, I need you to pause this video, run and get them, and bring them back. Also, if you have any distractions, anything that would keep you from giving your full attention to the lesson and God's Word, I would ask you to put that away right now. All right? All right, thank you for doing that. And thank you for getting your, your Bibles. And if you're just now coming back, I hope you remembered to push the play button when you came back. But I'm sure you know that because you are very smart. All right. Well, now it's time for Miss Angie. And again, we're in section 1.2. 1.2. And here is the large group lesson. Take it away, Miss Angie. Hi guys, thank you so much for joining us again here at Awana with Truth and Training. It's so good that you guys have signed in, you guys are learning, everything like that. We are on 1.2, God is Holy. And this was another big concept to kind of grab around. Um, so our memory verse is Revelations, which is the last book of the Bible. It is uh, for chapter 4, verse 8b, which is, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So what does that mean? It's a great song. I know a lot of songs use it, a lot of poetry use it, but what does it mean? So we're going to kind of unpack that um, today. So um, it goes back to the beginning, which is, we all sin. We all sin and we don't mean to. And God knows all the times that we sin, whether our parents know, grandparents, friends, God knows when we sin. Even me, he knows when I sin and my family doesn't catch me on there. But God is very different, is different from us. He is holy and he is and what he does is always right. So I started asking the question, what what makes a choice? What what where are our choices come from? What makes them right or wrong, good or bad, pleasing to God, not pleasing to God? I you know, there's a lot of different uh, choices that we make every single day. For example, what did you have for breakfast? Did you have your choice of cereal between Lucky Charms and Cheerios? Did you play with friends today and you could play between soccer and football? Um, did you have the choice of going outside or staying inside, playing video games or watching TV? Those are all great choices. But then we get into some harder choices. For example, who are our friends? Are we making those choices that are pleasing to God? Are we using or choosing the right words to express ourselves in anger and in sadness and in frustration? that are pleasing to God because everything we're supposed to do, we're not supposed to complain and it's supposed to be pleasing to God. So even in our hardest moments when we're angry and frustrated, we have to choose the right words um, on there. But we all make wrong choices. And, you know, there there's a great um, story in uh, Kings, First Kings. Um, it's Jeroboam. Jeroboam. Um, You'll have to figure out your own pronunciation. I like that one. 
but he is actually the grandson of King David and the son of Solomon. And so he is actually in the line of descendants to Jesus Christ, which I thought was kind of interesting. But he actually um, didn't listen to an older, wiser prophet on there. So 1 Kings chapter 13, I'm going to start around uh, verse uh, 16 because it's it's a big verse. It's a big story, but I'm going to kind of unpack it for you. So uh, he is uh, standing with friends and he is deciding on what he's going to do. And so uh, his sons tell, um, his sons show him the road that this prophet said, don't take Um, and the prophet also told him, don't drink or eat, uh, this bread or water. You must go down this path. You must, and eat and drink, uh, down this path, not the path to the right. And remember prophets had that great connection with God. They heard God's word, uh, and they were able to speak it in the truth. And whether they liked to hear it or not, we were supposed to listen to prophets back then. So, uh, of course, he chose not to listen. He went down the other road that he returned from. And he ate and drank the water and bread. And then he listened again to another prophet who said, uh, Um, So we're back to this older prophet. He says, I too am a prophet as you are. And as the angel said to me by the word of the Lord, bring him back with you to your house so that you may eat bread and drink water. And actually in quotes in the Bible, it says he was lying to him. So he's listening to someone else besides a trustworthy prophet on there. So the son of so the man of God returned with him and ate and drank in his house. That's where he made the mistake. He listened to somebody he wasn't supposed to, who wasn't, who didn't have his best interest at heart, who wasn't on the path to God, uh, to getting to know God. So he ate and drank, and then the prophet came back and said, um, "You." defied the word of the Lord and did not keep the commandment that God gave you. Uh, You came back and you ate the bread and drank the water in a place you were told not to. Um, So therefore your punishment will be, your body will not be buried in the tomb of your ancestors. And if you read on, that is exactly what happened. So there are lots of consequences to not choosing the right uh, the right choice that pleases God. It would have been easier for him. It was easier for him to go down the path with his friends and his sons and with his group. But the prophet said, you have to go this way and by yourself. And this is what's going to please God. I mean, how many times are we faced with that? Where we have friends, a group of friends that are telling us to go down this one path. Just, just go down this one path. It's really not that awful. Um, but something inside of you says, yeah, no, we, we should. If you actually look at Genesis uh, chapter 1 with Adam and Eve, Eve actually pauses right before she eats the fruit. Um, and I think that is like the gut check that we all have. Um, it's that gut check, that pause of, ooh, this is not the best decision. So that's where our sin is. So the question was, does God ever sin? Or not sin, but does God ever make the wrong choice for us? I mean, it, it's we're supposed to look to him. We're supposed to get our answers from him. But are we? But can he ever make the wrong choice for us? And does he ever ever does he ever have trouble making the right choice for us? I mean, we're changing day to day, and things are happening, and I, you know. Does he know that I should do this? Is this the path I'm supposed to go down? But then we go back to our memory verse that says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Now let me put that in a different perspective. 
Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was part of my past, who's part of my present, and is part of my future. He knows exactly what choices I'm going to make, when I'm going to sin, and the consequences that are going to come from that, because I'm going to learn lessons from those choices. And when we learn those lessons, and we take those, and we repent, and we admit, like, God, I didn't do that correctly. Um, that was a completely against you. And I'm sorry. I, that should not have happened. Then we get closer to him. We understand him more. We, we have those gut checks are a little bit more stronger on there. So understanding that God is holy, he's there for us in every, every way. We are not holy like God. Um, we are humans who are sinful. We are born of sin. And because we are all related to the first man and woman who is Adam and Eve, who were sinners, and because of our sin, we do not seek after God on our own. I can't do it on my own. I have to have God in my heart to seek after him. I can physically study everything, but to know him, to love him, it's not going to work. The Bible teaches us how to be right with God. We want to be right with God. Why? Because he knows what we need and we have those decisions to make and we want to be closer to with him because every time we make a good decision toward him, we get closer to him and we understand him more. So if we want to be right, we have to study the Bible. We have to study our past of people who made mistakes on there. We have choices all the time. You know, I there there's a there was a great podcast I was listening to. I'm going to go off on a little history tangent. You guys know I love history, but uh, in World War II, the day after um, we won D-Day, um, and they announced that the war was over, Frank Sinatra stood in front of. Uh, a group of soldiers, and uh, he was part of this podcast as an uplifting uh, for these soldiers who had fought in this in World War II. And he said, "Guys, you did a great job. Now let's be humble and go back to what we were doing. Let's go back to our families." That moment right there, he could have you know pumped their chest and you know given high fives and gloated and everything like that because they were still in Germany at the time and, uh, and in Normandy. And they could have gloated in front of the people that they just won against. I mean, how many athletes do we see tackle a quarterback for a loss of two yards and pump their chest like it's, you know, they just did the biggest victory ever. But one of the biggest victories in history was not celebrated. They were humble on there. So to know that, we have to study the Bible. We have to teach and correct and train us on there. And when we get those victories, we don't need to praise it to everybody. We need to praise it to him. We need to praise it to him because he's the one that gave us that opportunity to be victorious. Because again, he knows when we're going to need that and when we're going to fall. On there. Another great moment in history was when Christ was on the cross and he had a moment to go, um, You guys are so wrong. I can't believe you're doing this. Please believe in me. Everything like that. Except he didn't do that, he didn't plead with them. He looked at them and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He made that choice right then and there to not be gloating, but to put others before him. That's a love right there. Can you imagine being on the cross knowing that you're going to come back in three days? And he could have gone, nah, nah, I told you so. But he didn't. He went and taught again and showed love. Gosh, how great would that be if we did that? 
And we can only be holy in God's sight. And only way for us to be holy in God's sight is that when we forgive others for their sins and we trust God and we repent of their. The Holy Spirit has to live inside us for this to happen and helps to do what's right and to be more like Christ. It's hard. I'm not going to say it's not, but it's pretty amazing when that does happen overall. So when you go to make choices, again, some of them are easy, some of them are harder, but if we let sin take over, it can get pretty mucky. There's a fun, you know me, I like fun experiments. So this is our fun little beaker. This is going to represent my life. I know, all in one, this one beaker here. So I'm going to take this beaker and I'm going to fill it up. And I'm going to show you, and then this is just water. Just water, simple water in here. Right? And things that make me happy. Things that make me happy. Seeing my Awana friends, right? Seeing, going to church and seeing my um, fellow believers at church and praising God. Praying, spending time with family. And this fills me. As you can see, it's all going down. It's going to fill me and make it bright and wonderful. I like being with my animals, I love seeing all of you recite your verses to me. That's one of my favorite. I like uh, things that make me happy as good food. I will never pass up an opportunity to have a home-cooked meal because good food is always good on there. And other things that make me happy, spending time with my family, spending time with my friends, laughing, all those things make me happy. And guess what? When, the, I'm, when those things make me happy, God's happy. Those things make God happy because we're there glorifying him. Now, we said we were all sinners, right? Things that we do that sin that can muck up our life because it's a pretty awesome color right now. So lying. Yeah, sometimes we even say those little white lies that are never good and it mixes up. We can get angry. We're not slow to anger. Um, I mean, Christ was on the cross dying for us and he didn't get angry once. He, again, forgave, but he could have got angry and it marks up our life. Thinking bad thoughts. Just because we don't say them doesn't mean it doesn't push us away from God. Not doing our homework. Yeah, that's a big one, especially now that we're online on there. Making fun of others. Bullying. Can, sin can really murk up our life and take that color away, take that sunshine away. But you know what's really cool? Is God. Yeah, I know. God is pretty amazing. And when sin enters our life, he sent his son, Christ, down to wipe us away of our sins. He really did. He wiped us away of our sins. And no matter how much sin is in our life and how sad our life is, we always have Christ. So when Christ enters our life, we can repent, we can, we can smile, and things look better. They start clearing up, maybe. There it goes. And it gets clearer. And the more we know Christ, and the more that we love Christ, the better it can be. Now, it might not look like what we originally thought, but it still turns out pretty amazing on there. It wasn't dark and dreary. Now this is a pretty blue teal on there. But the more you pray, the more you come closer to Christ, the pretty more awesome your life is going to be. So is God holy? The answer is yes. Does he, does he have a trouble making the wrong decisions for us or the right decisions for us? No, he leaves that up to us. He leaves us, that up to us to learn and to come closer to him. Does he ever have trouble? No, he's God. 
He's got it. He's got it covered. Because remember, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Past, present, future. Guys, love seeing you. Back to you, Mr. Gary. Thanks, Miss Angie. What a great lesson, boys and girls. That reminds us that God is holy. He can't have anything to do with sin. Nothing. But you know what? Just like Miss Angie was talking about, sometimes we get it wrong and we muck up our lives and it gets all mucky with sin. But that's the good news. Because when we go to Jesus and invite him into our lives, when we put our trust and hope in him, guess what? He gets rid of all that sin, right? And so just like Miss Angie was showing you, when we, it's before, it's all mucky. But when we invite Jesus in, guess what? He washes that sin away. You know, back in the Old Testament time, when they would do burnt offerings and, and take the blood of those animals, those blood only covered the sins. It wasn't until Jesus came that we had true forgiveness. Isn't that neat? So let's recap real quick and make sure we understand. And it's really simple. Boys and girls, God is holy. He can't have anything to do with sin. And because of that, we all need to understand just that, that we are all sinners. Romans 3.23, right? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But it goes on in Romans 6.23 to tell us what in Romans 6.23, what those consequences are. And the consequences of those sin is death. That's separation from God forever and ever. But Romans 6.23 goes on to say, but the free gift of God is eternal life and Christ Jesus our Lord. How cool is that? So when we take and we put our trust and hope in Jesus, we are forgiven of those sins. That consequence of death or separation from God is over because he has paid for our sins. That's right. And of course, we all know John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life or everlasting life. Right? How awesome is this? But I want you to be careful, boys and girls, because... Many out there will say, well, if I'm good enough, I can get to heaven. I don't need him. I don't need Jesus. Or if, you know what, if I just make all the right choices in my life, yeah, I can get to heaven. Or if I help people enough, I can get to heaven. Guess what? The Bible tells us different. In John 14, 6, Jesus tells the disciples themselves. He says to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's what Jesus said. There is only one way to God the Father. There's only one way that our sin can be forgiven. And there's only one way that we can be reunified or brought back to God. And that is through his son, Jesus Christ. He is the only way. Well, boys and girls, I get so excited about that. But if you don't know that truth, if you haven't put your hope and trust in Jesus, would you please reach out to me or Mr. Rick or Miss Angie? Because we would love to talk to you about that and help you understand it better. Well, this is section 1.2, and I'm so thankful for you joining us this week. And until next week, I want you to remember that Jesus loves you and so do we. And we'll see you then. All right, bye now.